Three years ago, our land looked like this. Three years later, and a lot of hard work, our land now looks like this. This all started after myself and my wife bought a 42 acre piece of land that had been for sale for quite some time. It was heavily treated with invasive maple trees that had not been thinned or maintained ever. While these trees were invasive, we didn't want to remove all of them, but we did want to remove enough to have a usable piece of land. After hand drawing the plans for a fairly simple house, we got our permit to build and the work began. Initially the house was going to be right around 1600 square feet with a few bedrooms upstairs and one great room downstairs. Here's what I'm going to show you. That right there. We are good to go. Initially the plan was to subcontract out the things we weren't comfortable doing, do the things we were comfortable doing, try to save money in between, and wrap it up in a 30 year mortgage. Because our land is 2.6 miles from the nearest power line, nobody wanted to finance the project. This caused us to do some serious reflection and reevaluate just in fact what we could and couldn't do. I have 15 years in the plumbing trade, but above and beyond that, I had zero other construction experience. Good help has been hard to find. We started with the septic system, got a little bit of help from a few friends to pour the foundation, then from that point on basically did everything ourselves. Up to this point I had very little framing experience. I had framed up maybe a shed and a little bit of interior work in a remodel, but that was it. I did what I knew how to do. I talked to the right people when I didn't know what to do. I looked for discounts where I could get them, paid cash as we went. Conventionally framed the entire house and did virtually everything myself. Along the way, we've battled every kind of weather you can think of. Along the way, I've lost a few things, mainly a few pounds, but I found something that has given me more purpose in life than almost anything else. When the cost to build an average home in the area is north of $150 a square foot, we've managed to keep our costs around $16 a square foot. After getting the lower portion of the land thinned and cleared, and as we began to understand just in fact the beauty that we had, we felt that the rustic dug fir siding would be perfect up here.
My trusty sidekick Ruger has never let me down regardless of the conditions. Because the bank told us no, it forced me to figure out ways to save money, which ultimately meant that I was going to do everything from the septic system, to the gas line, to the electrical, to the roofing, to the siding, to the solar system. Everything that will be necessary to give us the 21st century comforts that we're looking for. I had never done anything significant with electrical, but I had a couple of good friends that were willing to talk me through it as I had questions. Our only source of heat is a wood-burning stove. In the last three years that we've owned the land, we've had as much as four feet of snow. We framed the house to handle well over a hundred pound snow load. As we got deeper into construction, we realized that we needed more room. Our intentions are to keep everything associated with the solar system inside the house. We've had more challenges along the way than I could have ever imagined. There have been moments where I wondered if this would ever come to an end. There have been moments where I figured out why nobody had ever built a house up here in the first place. The end result is we're three years into this and the house is nearly finished. We have nearly a 2,000 square foot house that's very well built, that we love, that's paid for. We poured another 400 square feet of concrete, which gave us a utility room for the water heater and everything associated with the solar system, as well as another bedroom and a bathroom. We've had just as many ups as we've had downs along the way, but we're in the home stretch. We're moments away from moving in. While we have many other projects, like a root cellar, like building my shop, like building a cabin on the back section of our property, we first can't wait to just move in. I then dug a shallow well, ran over a thousand feet of water line to a water tank that's over a hundred feet above the house. After hauling the water tank up the hill and getting it properly positioned, getting the solar well pumps in place, we have water. There's no question that hindsight's always 20-20. Knowing what I know now, if I could go back to the beginning and start over, I most definitely would have done things different. I most definitely would have avoided some of the mistakes I've made and some of the changes that we've had to embrace. But what's the point? If this was easy, everybody would be doing it.
Sometimes it's hard to know what we're capable of until we're put in situations where we just have to get things done. I've made mistakes. I will make more mistakes, I promise. But anything worth doing is gonna be hard. This is probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Second only to being a husband and a father, it's definitely one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. We've got a lot more projects to come, and I've got a lot more learning to do. My shop foundation walls have been waiting for me for two years. That's also on the short list. The upstairs is nearly finished with drywall. I'm about to transition to the downstairs drywall. Then it's paint, kitchen cabinets, then we'll probably move in. We've saved more money along the way than I ever could have imagined. We are nearly finished with our mortgage-free home, living in one of the most beautiful spots on the planet. As hard as this has been, we wouldn't change it for the world. We have individual playlists of every phase of construction that we've gone through. Nearly 300 videos. Don't forget to subscribe to see what the next three years look like.